Good day, everybody else. That just having a good one. Now, today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. I know there's been a lot of people talking about the whole AI scare and the big, you know, oh, AI is going to replace everybody and all the artists and all the things. But here's the thing. Remember when they first were releasing all these AI tools and they were like, look, this is supposed to help artists and AI technology will help uh, people be more artistic and help people, you know, it will do all the mundane things so people can spend more time being artistic. Well, so far, it's not doing that. It's replacing people that, from being artists. Now, Artists say um, AI will set in motion a race to the bottom that will degrade the value of our work. Um, now, on Tuesday, um, the Artist Rights Alliance, ARA, announced um, an open letter critical of AI uh, signed uh, by over 200 musical artists, including Pearl Jam, Nicki Minaj, Billie Eilish, Stevie Wonder, Elvis Costello, and the estate of Frank Sinatra. Um, and a letter which, with a ton more. Um, and a letter the artists call on AI developer technology uh, companies, platforms, and digital music services to stop using AI to infringe upon and devalue the rights of human artists. Um, a tweet from the ARA added that AI poses an existential threat uh, to their art. Now, some people out there might be rolling their eyes and like, oh, geez, here we go. But there's some stuff here that we're going to get into some legal areas that are a bit, you know, we were already stumbling into areas where, okay, you're, you got your thing getting out data sets and it's scraping all this information and it was doing it with the artists and it was like okay some of this art that we're seeing is like particular to a certain artist and it's literally copying that artist how is that that's not copyright infringement or anything it starts to get you start to get into some you know pretty gray areas skirting the line there as they say um the visual artists began protesting the advent of um, generative AI after the rise of the first mainstream AI image generators in 2022. I uh, came a little bit before that, but okay, we'll go with it. Um, and considering that um, generative AI research has since been um, undertaken for other forms of creative media, we have seen that uh, protests extend to professionals, to other creative domains such as writers, actors, filmmakers, and now musicians. Now, um, I, I know a lot of you have probably seen the videos out there of some of these like AI film work and stuff. And I mean, the, the shots, everything, I mean, this looks like real. Not only does it look real, but the shots, I mean, the, you look like there's real directors and, you know, people having a hand in this when it's all just. AI scraping the internet and creating something off a prompt that, you know, looks like the thing that the people say. Now, here's where we get into this stuff. When used irresponsibly, AI poses enormous threats to our ability to protect our privacy and identities, our music and our livelihoods. The open letter states, um, it alleges that some of the biggest and most powerful companies, we know who you are, you don't have to be named. So just because they're unnamed, doesn't matter. We know who you are because you're the only ones. <laughs> so um, it, uh, it states uh, that they are uh, uh, using the work of artists without their permission to train AI models with the aim of replacing human artists and AI created content. Now, this is myself, I think stuff like chat GPT and all that is, is very valuable because it's going out and it's scraping information. If I ask it a question like, Hey, uh, how do I put this speaker thing back together? Or where can I find the instructions for this thing? It's very helpful. Um, I'm having, um, you know, a pulse rate of, you know, uh, 120 and my blood pressure is 180 over, you know, 190. Uh, am I okay? Uh, chat GPT. No, you're 
you're hypertensive, you're about to die, go seek help. Um, that these are, that's helpful. That that's helpful. And I don't believe that you can convince anybody that that's, you know, stealing, you know, information that, oh, well, they should have gone to a doctor and suck. Well, no, if you need information right off the bat and you don't got time to search the internet for it or go through a thousand things. Oh, turns out this is just an ad and it's trying to tell me something. It's not trying to help me. Well, now my blood pressure is just getting higher. So, you know, those things are, are all right. But when you seek to aid or replace, um, you know, these things and you're, you're scraping those artistic things for their, you know, it's going to come to the point to where we're going to have to license frequencies, vocal frequencies. People's voices will have to be licensed so other people can't use them. Now, there are some funny uses for this, and it gets into that in the article, you know, with, um, you know, funny songs or whatever, you know, made with, you know, somebody's voice or whatever. But here's where I would say we're getting into the gray areas here. In January, Beerbold reported that AI research taken place at Google DeepMind had trained an unnamed music generating AI on a large data set of copywritten music without seeking artist permission. The report may have been referring to Google's Lyra. Lyria, um, an AI generation model announced in November that the company uh, positioned as a tool for enhancing human creativity. Uh, the tech has since powered musical experiments uh, from YouTube. Uh, we previously uh, covered here um, the other AI tools like uh, Refusion, uh, Google's uh, Music. Um, I am or whatever, uh, uh, stable diffusion, uh, uh, stable audio, uh, all that stuff. Now it's, it's great for when you're making, you know, parody songs or, or whatever, but to, to be making money out that we already know that that's going to be a no, no, that they're already like, okay, we have sound hounds we'll call that are out there and they're already on the internet for licensed music. So when it hears the licensed music, it says, whoa, stop. Or when it hears that artist, wait a minute. No, it's, that's not you. And you're, you, you're going to get caught even if the sound hounds don't kind of, cause somebody is going to say something to somebody and it's going to come to that artist's attention that, wait a minute, I never wrote a song about my, my anything sticking to my anything. So here's where, you know, considering AI's potential impact on music, it's um, um, instructive, uh, instructive to remember historic um, instance where uh, tech innovation initially sparked concern among artists, for instance, the introduction of synthesizers and stuff. But this ain't that. That was a whole nother instrument. Okay, and it's still an instrument that's used to this day by, guess what? Musicians. So, um, you know, yeah, there was a, a little bit of stuff because, you know, at the time, but it wasn't like this. It had, it, it wasn't like this. Now, for all those that are, you know, wondering, you know, how, how good is this? Well, let me show you. That's a great question. So here we got, let me see here. Here we got this program called uh, Suno. I almost don't want to tell you what it is because <laughs> people just go out and use it. Now, I didn't give it any lyrics, nothing. I said, I told it to, um, to write me um, a song about the passage of time, um, a progressive song about the passage of time. And here's what it gave me. Sickness ceases, replace my fears, ease my 
See what I mean? Now, I can tell you, I hear a few bands in there that this thing is copied, okay? And some of them being bands that we've even covered here on this channel. I mean, I, I can hear even a, a little bit of a Nightwish and, and stuff like that in there. Um, now, here I went in a whole other direction. I said, oh, well, I wonder if we could, if it is something for, uh, say, aiding in the, the, the making of music, hmm. What would, what would I, you know, ever want to use in my musical recording that I couldn't just offhand just get, you know, or make a phone call and be like, hey, send the boys over. We need some Gregorian chants. So I did the same thing. I asked it to write me a song about the passage of time and the style of Gregorian chance and this is what it gave me in this realm of fleeting moments we abide time the elusive master slipping through our grass moments slip like sand from the hourglass oh how we strive and yearn but time shall not subside into years in this ethereal dance we're but fleeting souls the ticking clock its rhythm it tolls as we run we stumble consumed by our fears you get okay if if I could just as easily take that, turn around, put it in a song that's got other stuff behind it that I've put and totally turn it right into, yep, this is my song. Never mind where I got the Gregorian chanters. I, they're mine. I got them. And that's, that's all. They're mine. You can't have them. But, Here's the thing, man, you know, using stuff or, you know, getting samples, stuff like that. But we're talking, you just heard something where there wasn't any humans that needed to be involved at all. And in fact, never mind taking the song to or taking parts of it or the ideas of it to put it in your song. Just release the freaking song and it will probably make money. And this is where we get into problems because you know you got you know music musicians and producers or stuff you know, people like myself that have been in the, the the field for years and one on one different aspect or another whether it be on stage behind the stage in front of the stage whatever uh side stage um it's you know i've been in the music business um a long time and i've seen you know that always it that there is always those people that look to make money off of artists now what's a record label's biggest hurdle to get over when making money off an artist paying the artist so if they can get over doing that and say just well you know we own the rights to billy eilish and her music catalog why can't we just make some Billie Eilish music? Or we own the rights to say Roy Orbison's music. How about we make some new Roy Orbison? For those of you that don't know, Roy Orbison, is, he was a great artist, kind of compared to Elvis in a way because of his singing styles and stuff like that. But um, he no longer with us. His last project was the Traveling Wilburys, uh, which... Admittedly, was awesome. <laughs> Had to be there, I guess. Um, now, you know, and when they say race to the bottom, we don't have to 
you know, really get into the article to understand why it's going to be a race to the bottom. Because if every idiot can just type in stuff where you got people like myself that have gone through music theory and all this stuff to learn and to put together these songs that, you know, are, you know, that, that touch people or that, you know, people can relate to or that just pluck on the heartstrings because of the beautiful melodies and stuff. I mean, you know, if you can just have the, tell the, you know, the, the AI to just, oh, well, write me a song in, in the style of whatever. And there we go. Uh, now I'm a musician. No, you're not. You're a fake musician. Fakerist. Um, you know, I, I don't know where the le legality is going to go on that stuff. I know that Spotify and a lot of them different um, music uh, uh, platforms are either outright not accepting anything from AI because they have tools to be able to tell if it's been generated by AI because, you know, um, some things are just too perfect and also they can just, you know, they have AI to tell if it's AI. The AIs talk to each other and they're like, Hey, you AI? No, I'm not AI. You AI? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. So, um, it's, it really is. It's going to devalue music and it's going to be like, well, instead of going out and, you know, looking for this kind of music or, you know, why don't I just, make some music of my own that I want to listen to. And I'll have my own concepts and my own. Well, that would be a pretty neat idea. And, you know, and, and probably, you know, you could do that. And maybe even sample your own voice or get somebody to, you know, uh, lend their voice. And you could even have the AI do it in their voice and blah, blah, blah. And you could, you know, make a little deal, whatever. I don't know what the, what the rules, you know, are going to be. But I do know that what these artists are talking about right here, you know, I have to, you know, I have to agree that, you know, look, going out and getting some data sets, that's okay. We're not talking about data. This is art. This is music. This was made by a human being that owns it, that owns rights to it, or a company that owns rights to it, that they could at some point buy back, or maybe they just own their own rights to their own music, you know? And what about the independent music scene? What is it scraping from that? We already know that the in people, they've already tried to put the stigma on independent music that, oh, independent music equals not good music. Well, no, I've found more awesome music in the independent scene than I have in the mainstream. It's just, there's way more of it to be had out there. There's way more of it to be heard because there's no gatekeepers saying no. You know, in fact, those same gatekeepers will go out and pay for a band to make albums to shelf that maybe they'll pull off the shelf one day when they're hurting for some money, but they don't want competition. So what do they do? They go out, they sign a record deal with that band for that band not to tour, for not to make music, to not. That's how damn Yankees ended their career. They literally got paid to not make an album. It's, it's madness. I know, but it's. It's what record companies do so they don't have to worry about it. They'd rather buy the competition than worry about having to compete with it. It's, you know, and it's like competition is, is always good for the people buying the stuff because the more competition, the lower the prices get. Well, what's the competition on something like this? And what's the, what is even the price mark? How are you going to sell me something that nobody made? That's the thing. It, it's like nobody made this. Even the person that types in the prompt. Now, if you wrote all the lyrics, I'll give you that. You wrote a nice, cute little poem there. But you didn't make any of the music. Hell, you didn't even make the person who sang it sing it. It's, it's all made up. And like I said, it's cute. Parodies, it's awesome. I love mashups. I love all that stuff. It's all great. But none of them people try to license that. None of them people try to make, it's all, you know, 
like, look, you got mashup channels or whatever. You have it monetized and stuff like that. But these are totally different things that, you know, and yeah. And even some of them, I think, don't get to monetize, you know, so I'm not sure it works with mashup channels. I have to be honest, but I, I do know that, you know, it is, it is kind of neat when you, when you see the mashups, cause you could kind of see the maths, how the mathematics work in music sometimes. And it's like, wait a minute. And you know, it, it's kind of funny to hear Metallica singing with, uh, earth, wind and fire. <laughs> it's just like, Whoa. <laughs> And it's funny. It's cool. But it also, it took somebody, when they do those mashups, it takes a skilled DJ to sync it up, to get it right, to, you know. And sometimes it takes hours and hours and days and weeks to get the song right. And the songs were already written. If I tell the AI to do a mashup, it's probably just going to come out with two songs mashed together. I don't know. All I do know is now we're treading the territory where it was already, you know, one thing and it was like, oh, the poor artists, so oh, they're going to have, you know, it's like, you know, oh, they're going to lose money. Yeah, yeah, they're going to lose out to AI because why would I pay an artist or a digital graphic designer to make something when I can just tell an AI to do it? You know, there, there has to be limits on things. There has to be some sort of, you know, um, advisory that this is all created by ai that none of this none of what you are seeing is real um you know like the penguin you didn't see anything <laughs> you know i just i i don't think that this is gonna this is gonna work well and you know w just a little example i gave you of of what and it's a fun little cool thing to play around with and hey stuff like that can help people with writer's block or that you know are trying to get over this part in a song that, hey maybe if i had this little ai tool help me out a little bit it could inspire some help yes that is that's a cool way to use it that's yeah great way um but you know that record labels are gonna license they're gonna find ways to license this music and keep it for themselves and take the artists out of the equation they're going to try to find a way to do this. If they don't keep up on all the advancements, you know, we've already had to make, you know, what was it? The MMA act, you know, um, the, you know, uh, it, it was the new law, uh, for, um, you know, uh, creators being paid fairly in a digital market because, some of these creators, like say, like uh, Smokey Robinson, um, you know, or creators uh, even in the '80s and even in, even in the um, '90s, didn't have to worry about the digital market. They they didn't sign contracts for that, so the digital market and but the record label knows they didn't, and they sure as hell are going to take advantage of it. And they're going to do everything they can to rip off the artists that are making them the million dollars so they could smoke the hundred dollar cigars and sit in their lavish million dollar pool in front of their $500 million house that only two people live in. It's just, you know, look, it's not all oh, these poor rich artists, you know, it's no, it's everybody. It's they're the first line of defense. If the mainstream can't hold it back, the independent scene doesn't stand a chance. Or maybe that's where people will end up going because they'll know that the mainstream is just full of a bunch of made up stuff that a computer generated, where the independent music scene is full of artists, self made, uh, you know, actual musicians with a heart that beats with you know um a brain that thinks and you know with emotions and feelings and and life struggles and all that um you know maybe you know maybe this is the beginning of the end of the mainstream it's because it's it's been the snake that eats itself for a while now and it's only getting worse and you know i 
I totally see them taking advantage of all this, um, you know, using Miss Billie Eilish's um, voice or namesake to release music that she was never a part of or to, you know, it's, you know, come on. If, if you could think of it, they're already working out a way to do it. So just, you know, that's always a good thing to keep in mind. You know, if, if you thought of it and somebody else is already in the process of doing it, um, you know, not all the time because people invent things. So go to make sure you get your patents and your copyrights. But uh, yeah, this is uh, something to think about. And it's something to think about for the person buying music. Like, you know, is there, you know, it's like before we had the whole tip of gore and all that. And we ended up with parental advisory stuff. And, um, you know, uh, but still. Just to get, you know, make sure that the government and stuff didn't censor music and that they couldn't censor art. There had to be a congressional hearing and they even ended up still putting a little stupid sticker on the CD, which actually turned around and helped them sell more CDs because everybody that saw that sticker knew awesome album. <laughs> yeah. Mom's going to hate this. Yeah. We should both buy one. <laughs> that's just you know um it, it it really did backfire and um you know and i think that you know there there probably is gonna have to be some type of thing um some type of uh congressional hearing that puts artists once again back in front of our holier than thou lawmakers to, to to ask them to Please, pretty please, could you make a law that makes it a little bit more fair for people that actually create art to have it not be stolen as a data set? I don't think all these artists that have been making all these music expect it to just be a data set at the end of the day. You know, if so, sell your catalog while you can. Because it's just going to be a data set, you know, and maybe that should be the rule. If it's going to be a data set, you should have ownership in it. If you're going to use it as a data set, you should have rights to it of some sort. I don't know. I'm no lawmaker, but these seem like common sense things to me. I mean, uh, am I out of the realm on this? Maybe. I don't know. You tell me. What do you think about the whole thing? I'll leave a link to this article and all that below. Um, you know, this this came out. They they did all this in March. Um, but I I just think, you know, with you look every day, there's a there's a YouTube channel right now. Maybe, maybe I'll link to it, maybe I won't, but it has a whole bunch of parody songs, and it's all made, it's all made with AI. It's all made with the same exact tool I just showed you. Um, you could tell because the songs are the same links. Um, but, you know, and, and look, those things are fun and those things can, you know, be thought provoking or give you some cool ideas. But at the end of the day, we are really skirting the line. So, I, I, you know, I don't know where this is going to end up. But if, if things keep going on the trajectory they are and things keep going the way they, I, I, I don't see it ending good for anybody. I think everybody loses on this. I think the artist, the listener, everybody is going to lose, um, even the record labels. And, you know, maybe the only winners at the end of the day will be those that are still left in the independent music scene. Who knows? Maybe they'll be our salvation. Well, let me know what you think. Um, if you're into finding new music and all that good stuff, uh, we we got a lot of that. Uh, we uh, also do uh, music news, talks, discussions, stuff like that. But we're into finding new music from all around the world, um, music of all different types, um, genres, and you know, j just people doing incredible things that I didn't even know was humanly possible, let alone in a scale that they're doing them at, and just awesome stuff in general that i uh would encourage you to check out whole genres of music i didn't even know existed and i've been playing music my whole life so yeah there's that so um yeah uh take a look around and let me know what you think and um let me know how we can uh, make improvements around the place and uh 
Have a great day out there, everybody, and um, don't get your music stolen as a data set. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.